awesome. That's true. How's it, Dave? How are you feeling, bro? I, I heard you've been right. sick, eh? Yeah, man. Um, no, not great, but it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. I'm it's back. not often the McLash and get sick. I think it's the first time <laughs> in two, three, no, five years I've known you to be sick, eh? Yeah, man, it doesn't happen a lot, but it's all good. Uh, we've got a special guest on today. Do you want to do an introduction for us real quick? Yeah. Mark, good to see you then. I think uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of our members have heard of you, have met you. Um, and, and just to share, Mark, this is a thing with myself and Dave, we're the guest speaker, as Dave said. Um, and there's a lot we're going to be talking about today. So like Dave said, Mark, take it away. Who are you and what's your background? Okay, cool. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Dave. It's like an absolute honor to actually be on this live Facebook stream. I mean, I've never done this before, so this is super exciting for me. Um, awesome. A little bit about me. I've been in the game, property development, leasing, etc. for the last 30 years. I've traveled this country high and low, um, been developed in places like Putida Chaba, which is in the free state, all the way through to Bushbuck Ridge, uh, as well as uh, Cape Town, etc. So I've been around, I've done amazing travels through this country, met amazing people. Um, and one of the things is um, I just love the experience and I love to be able to share the experience of what I've done and what I've learned with other people as well so that people can enjoy the same things that I have really. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. Exactly. I mean, Mark, how many years has it been? Have you been in the space of building shopping centers and units for the last five years, 30 years. How many years has it been? Eh? 30 years. It's been the big three. Oh, what can I say? I mean, I know I look nice and young and everything else, but that's Vaseline intensive care, but <laughs> definitely <laughs> the stress of the industry. I mean, the industry is, it's a very stressful environment and, and uh, yeah, I, you know, like, some of the things that we've done is we've been involved in like uh, broad acre shopping center. We put the Woolworths in there, uh, et cetera, just for the, the local yokels that know like some of the centers and things like that. Then yeah. Cape town uh, in Google Air too, we built a shopping center, uh, which was the first shopping center in like proper regional size mall shopping center in a township uh, in the Western yeah. Cape. So, you know, we've done exciting things. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, I can see uh, Mark and Dave. There's quite a few people joining us. Yako's joining us from Belgium. He's on every week. How's it going, Yako? And you know Jean Paul. Hey, Mark, you're doing some stuff there with Jean Paul, which yes, is great. Bapalele is from Durban. Um, they're joining us all the way from Durban. Butomelo, good to see you on there. Alani's on there as well, Mark. So, hi to Alani. Um, Leona is also joining us. <laughs> there's quite a few people joining us now, which is great. Um, and there's a reason why we have you on today, Mark, because I'll be seeing you Wednesday night. I'll be seeing you Saturday evening, uh, Saturday evening, sat Saturday and Sunday this weekend. And we'll tell the guests a bit more about what is happening Wednesday night, what is happening this weekend. Uh, but for everyone watching this live stream right now, if you want to become a developer or you are a developer and you've got some questions around how to identify an opportunity, um, you know, who do you contact first if you do identify an opportunity? Um, is it really for you? There's so many questions we get within our own network around. Uh, and Mark, you know, I get quite a few of our, of, our, of our members saying, hey, Andrew, I want to become a developer. I would love to build four apartments or four houses. or I'd love to knock this house down and build. Then we've got people in the network doing stuff like building, you know, a thousand streets accommodation units. And I want to have a chat to you today um, more around should we all get into that sector within the property space? Is it for everyone? And I'm going to encourage everyone. I need to see you there. Uh, Doug, I mean, uh, John, Paul, all of you, feel free to throw questions at Mark today. Uh, but I think what we will do is we'll start with Dave. Dave will take us through what events are happening this week. It's a, it's a usual thing that we do. Just update the community with where are the events happening around the country, are they virtual, are they live in person. While we're going through what events are happening, um, of course, Mark, I'm going to ask you to give us a good in-depth um, update as to what's happening on the weekend. And please throw your questions at us. Take your friends in. If you have anyone that wants to develop, they want to build, whether it's a back room, bedroom, a back room, or you want to build a high-rise building or get into commercial or shopping centers, please fire questions away now. But I think, Dave, as per normal, should we maybe start cool. with um, going around what's happening? 100%. So um, pretty pretty fun week this week. Lots of new things happening, not, like 
Drew said, very development themed, which is quite nice. Um, first up, tomorrow night, we got our first part of our training session on the global wealth platform. Um, how do global, sorry, how global invest platform, how does global invest work? How you, can you set up your accounts? What process you're going to go through? So the first session is tomorrow night and the second session is early in November 11th. Um, so it's a two-parter. It's 3,000 Rand. Uh, someone will drop a link in the chat box for you guys to join that. It's really about what it needs to go into you investing on the global investment platform. It's really going to be a fun one and hopefully a lot of lessons to be learned. Yeah. Uh, like we said, Wednesday nights our premier event. So up in Johannesburg at the Villa Bianca, um, both Andrew and Mark will be hosting the networking event there. Drew, do you want to talk a little bit more about what you guys yeah. will be covering? So, so the premier event, Dave, as we all know, is for the intermediate and professional members. So it's not open to the the public. It's only for an intermediate or professional member. And the point of these events. The reason why they exist is purely for networking. Yes, there's a topic, and Mark Berman's going to be there for 45 minutes talking around uh, what we're going to talk about in a minute. But it's such a great platform to get back to a live environment where you can start networking, swapping business cards, and actually doing business in the room. It's a round table. It's a great, relaxed, informal event. And we'll start at 6.30 on Wednesday night in the East Rand of Johannesburg. Um, some of you I know booked your tickets already. Um, if you haven't, um, please make sure you book and you get there. Um, and then, yeah, so we've got Uber Home Loans will be there. Absa Bank will be there. Absa Bank will, will be putting a, um, a little speech or talk together around financing a, a building. If you, if you want to build rooms in, in your back garden or uh, in Tuffle, we'll, we'll be talking around the feasibility studies. Of if, you want to, if you want to go build and build a building in the CBD or buy one and renovate one, um, how would you do the feasibility study around that? And then, Mark, can you tell us what are you going to be talking about that evening? Okay, so firstly, I think, uh, you know, when I, the whole evening really is about um, is becoming a property developer really for you? I mean, it's different strokes for different folks. Everybody's got their own little niche and their own little thing to do. And I really want to bring home the reality of what it takes to become a property developer and succeed at it. It's not just about, oh, I'm going to be a property developer. Obviously, it's about doing well, shooting the lights out and, and making your dreams come true. And of course, by making your own dreams come true, one of the things that you're actually doing by default is you're making other people's dreams come true. Whether you're building a house or you're building a shopping center, where you're building an industrial park, somebody's going to occupy, somebody's going to be living their dream inside that space. And uh, either, you know, creating living for themselves and others again. So you extend the kind of ecosystem all the time. So um, obviously take the guys, everybody will be taken through a journey of property development, um, knowing what the rules are, give you know, talking about templates to follow. Um, exactly. And then also in terms of like, how do you know if it works or not? Um, and can I bank my project? Is it something that people will fund? And what is the risk? What's the reward? And uh, truth, truthfully, is there a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is really what this is all about for all of us. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be taking exactly. everybody through. Is, is there a cha-ching? Now, Mark, is everyone going to learn everything about, um, about this subject in 45 minutes? Wow. So that would be, <laughs> love that to would say, be, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those things that everybody, like how right. quickly can I learn property development? I've been, I've been involved in the property development game now for, for 30 years, uh, in all different aspects. And the one thing I know for sure is that I don't know it all. That is gone. Yeah. That, that's a <laughs> foregone conclusion for me. Um, I mean, I just, just by way of example, just a, a little thing on this is, is, you know, um, I thought I thought I knew quite a bit about property development on in April I mean, sorry in February in February 2020 I thought I really knew a lot about property development that I I could pretty much you know, navigate my way and then in March 2020 I learned that I knew nothing about property development because we got hit by this little virus that that changed the platform of how we operate and and where we work um and how we work I mean all of a sudden we had claims for delays we had claims for for uh, PP, you know, PPE, which is something, you know, professional uh, uh, protection equipment, etc., which we'd never had before. I mean, this was like a, such an anomaly. So this is, you know, the property yeah. development is, a, is a, a, a metamorphosis. It changes all the time. It's not something that you can wake up today and know it all. And then uh, in the next five years, yeah. nothing changes. It changes daily, 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 daily. Absolutely. That's 30 years of experience. So Wednesday night, we'll start the journey. So 
what we'll be doing, Mark, is taking our community through a journey, right? It starts today in the coffee chat. Stage number two is the premier event on Wednesday night. Dave, are there any other events between Wednesday and Saturday, or do you want to jump straight into no. Saturday? No, straight into Saturday. That's good. Mm. So on Saturday um, in Johannesburg, for the first time ever in the history of Sappen and TPA, we are running a two-day masterclass on that subject. It doesn't matter if you if 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 you if if you're just like to learn the basics or the journey, or if you actually want to start building a high-rise building. The principles are the same, but I know I know Mark right now because I chatted to Mark on Friday. We're going through the agenda for this weekend, this Saturday, Sunday. It's a full workshop, nine to five and nine to four. There's networking on the Saturday evening at the hotel, and Mark has got a list this long of what we want to cover on the weekend. So, Mark, just take us through, you know, and, I, and we've only got so much time now, but maybe take us through some of the high level, what we're going to be covering. Let's then take some questions from the audience. I can see that uh, now has got a question around plans, and I think the question is from Akuta about he wants to know where one can find the plans be, before we engage architects, but we'll cover that after, Mark. You talk about what are we covering this, uh, this weekend. All right, cool. So, um... I think the it's, listen. This is going to be a fun weekend. I think that's the whole point here. Is that's a really fun exercise. At the end of the day, you're going to be able to go out and know what to look for and what questions to ask. I mean, I'm not going to tell you that you are going to know everything again in two days. That is going to make you the top property developer in South Africa, but it's going to give you legs so that you can actually start. And that, I think, is what it's all about, is about being able to start, know what questions to ask, and and know what you don't know, I think, is really what, yeah. what the big deal is here. So, firstly, I'm going to define property development. Um, I'm also going to go through the property development process. We're going to go through the stakeholders, like who's involved, what their involvement is. These are very important things that you need to know, because one just thinks it's uh, you and the guy who owns the house, or you and the... Um, yeah. the, the architect. There's a lot more people involved in this. Of course, then the professional team, what their roles are, what their responsibilities are, uh, the, the role of market research, uh, the project feasibility, obviously that is like super, super important. Uh, then we've got town planning, uh, the rules of town planning, and I've got a special guest speaker uh, coming in to speak to us on that. Uh, her name's Saskia Cole. She's a veteran town planner. Um, she does a lot of work for me. We've done a lot of work together very successfully, just so you know that, uh, you know, she's got great experience and she's going to talk to you right, you know, the the basics and the understanding of town planning and the principles and the laws that go with that. So that's very, very important. Then we're talking about securing the site and the offer to purchase, uh, securing an end user, design, specification, and cost plans, uh, project bankability, and getting finance, the bond grant, pre-registration, pre-disbursement conditions. And that's day one. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we're going to go, we're going to be, a, it's a, you're on a rocket ride because there's a lot of stuff to cover um, in a exactly. very short period of time. That's just done. Um, and obviously, there are going to be tons of questions and things like exercise afterwards, which you're going to have a lot of fun with. Um, so that's day one. I'll day do. two is really uh, about the this. fact that you've now learned how to make the money on day one. So day two is now you're going to learn how not to lose the money that you've made. Yeah. So what that's, so what that's all about really is that we're going to discuss the principal agent. We're going to discuss getting plans approved. We're going to discuss the building program. We're going to discuss the building contract, bills of quantities, the tender process, awarding the tender, running the project, meetings and reporting, quality control, works completion and snagging, final completion. And then I've got another guest speaker who is a um, mega, mega, mega property developer. He's done hundreds of units, um, if not more. I mean, like he's busy with a 500 unit uh, development right now. Uh, residential. His name's Costas, and he's going to come and he's going to talk to us as well and give you some insight into into those kind of projects. So, guys, you're in for a rocket ride. So you need to tie yourself to your chair, and it's going to be fun. 
It's going to be super exciting. Yeah? And, and it's, it's brand new to the Academy and Sapin, so I can't wait for Wednesday night and the weekend. So I think, Mark, what we should do for now is let's take some questions from the audience. Um, and then I've got a few questions for you as well. Um, the first question was from sure. now. He was asking about those plans. Um, he said, hi, Mark. This is Mokata here from, from, from Pretoria. Um, I want to know where one can find plans, house plans, before we engage architects. Okay, so there are a number of places that you can do it. Obviously, you can search online for house plans and you can go into places like exclusive books. They sell books that are just contain hundreds and hundreds of house plans as well. Um, the issue with doing something like that, that's great for ideas of how you want, you want things to work and how you want things, you know, what your ideas are. But, you know, it's so site specific. And um, you can like sketch out a little thing for yourself of what the idea that you have, but you've got to engage an architect, somebody who knows every single in and out on design. Um, because if you're building on a slope and you want in your house that you've designed, you want on one level, you're going to have either something on stilts or you're going to cutting into the ground like nobody's business. So, you know, you need good insight from people with great experience. Yeah, exactly. So, and, yeah, and I guess um, on I want to go view some flats. Well, it's actually commercial and we want to convert it to flats. And it so happened that the owner actually had the plans at home. So when you do go to a property, um, do, I, I, it depends, an industrial, commercial, residential. Um, a lot of the times I've engaged a private seller or a seller, even if, even if there's an estate agent involved, sometimes the owner has the plans. And if they don't, we can also go to the municipality if we wanted to, um, or we ask our architect to go there for us. Um, so that's been my experience with that. So I can see a Kashni's joined from Cape Town. How's the Kashni and um, John Lesolo says, how's it? He says, hi, Mark. Leroy, good to see you there, Leroy. Lokanya's joined us. So quite, Shirley Boy's joined us from Cape Town. I think you've met Shirley Boy, hey, Mark? Yes, I did. Shirley I Boy. did on the first, uh, the first uh, weekend I was with you guys. It was brilliant. Yes, He's a great yeah, guy. That's right. Very insightful. Nice. Absolutely. Hear that, Shirley Boy? Um, there's a question here. So there's quite a few questions around your most challenging moments you've had. So doing a development, this is from Michael. Uh, what's your biggest challenge you've had? What's your most rewarding? So I guess like th think of your past, like think of your journey, a project that's like, geez, it's just been challenge after challenge after challenge, or a project that's like, wow, amazing. Can you think of those th those moments? Well, I think, you know, I think everything has its challenges. Um, there's, I don't think there's any project ever in the history of this planet that has just run to to schedule that has just worked out the way that it was originally planned there's always something that's happened um you can plan you always plan for the worst and hope for the best i mean that's really the the, the thing on, on on development um you check you, you you've got all your check sheets and your checklists and everything else and you make sure that you've done all the best work that you can do but factually greenfield's development when you hit the ground you know you've done a geotech survey and you've dug a hole in one place. And when you start digging the, the foundations, you 10 meters away from, from, from where you dug the hole, you've got collapsible soil. So that happened to us in, in, in Randburg. Uh, we be doing uh, a resi development, four story walkups. We do the, the geotech, everything's fine. We come and get to the site to do full investigations and was like, unbelievable i mean one one bucket into the ground and this hole just disappeared underneath us we were like so now what so obviously that's why you have contingencies you know you have contingencies in your feasibility to make sure that if something does happen then you're not caught unawares and and you you know you can you can you can co you can cover it i think like some of the the interesting things that we've had is like really really cool things let me give you an example we we built in google to um like around about 10 years ago something that hadn't been done before um and we had a challenge obviously we were we were in a community that never had this kind of development happening in it there were vested interests there were people take, trying to take advantage and we uh, we were chased off site you know we were chased off site with with guys with with rifles and 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 submachine guns and things like that so there was the 
the Freedom Action Group and, think, and, and guys like that in Cape Town that really gave us a serious hard time and threatened the project. So, you, you know, we in those days when we were doing this, there was no community liaison officer or things like that in terms of the way that things have evolved over time. So it was very a new nuance to, to the way that things had to get handled. And um, we quelled everything. We had some amazing guys. We worked together with Group 5 and Old Mutual Ideas Fund. The guys are just stellar, stellar examples of, of, of gentlemen, really. And uh, one of the, the partners in this whole thing and, and one of the driving forces was a guy by the, name, by the name of Mzoli. And I think some of you down in Cape Town know about Mzoli and Mzoli's, which was his restaurant that he had down there in Google. It's a very, very famous place. As a matter of fact, I think it's the only restaurant that appears on, on Wikipedia. But be that as it made, um, you know, we, we had this whole this whole thing. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that we've ever, ever had to encounter as developers, because we weren't we weren't used to that kind of stuff. You know, you know, Old Mutual and Group 5 together were joint developers on this thing. And, you know, we, we got through everything. It was anchored by ShopRite and by um, Spa. We had the likes of FNB, TrueWords, Fushini Group, you know, all the all the all the big guns were involved, Pepcor really really spectacular shopping center in the end and you know you don't realize the the impact of what you're doing in a community when you're doing something like this until the opening day and we had queues and queues of people um outside the building i've, I've it's throngs of people it's the most incredible thing to actually observe and we were we had this opening ceremony uh, the press were there, it was being filmed, etc., etc. I was the, the master of ceremonies um, for this event. And when we, I'd finished the event and I thanked everybody for coming and there was all this applause and clapping and we were about to open the doors, um, there was one little old lady sitting in the front of, of, um, the, of the space which we had set up and which was just outside the front of ShopRite. And she was sitting there and she got up and she walked towards me and she said, you, you, I said, what do you mean, me, me? What have I done wrong now? Have I done something wrong? She said, you have done something special today. Today, you made Guguletu a city and not a township because you brought shopping to the people. And she hugged me and started crying. I mean, I can't really? explain that feeling. Super I can't explain nice. that feeling. Really that is nice. super, super special. And you can't swap that. You can't. It's it's not about it's not about the money, guys. This is about the difference that you make. You really do make a difference in people's lives. So, the lows of the one day, the one day somebody's trying to kill you and get you off site, and the next day you're getting thanked and hugged and cried upon because you've just done the most amazing thing. So yeah. that's how it works. That's the highs and the lows, you know. Yeah, no, exactly. So thank and thanks for thanks for sh sharing that, eh, Mark. I think it's really really cool. Um, let's just see what else we let's see who's joined us and what else we have in there so guys we've got mark berman on for the next call at 10 15 minutes if you have any questions for mark um i see here uh, developers there's some people that, are, that there's some aspiring tie boys saying he wants to become a developer that's fantastic um is developing for everyone i'm going to ask mark that question in a moment um there was a question from Botomelo. Uh, i'm just trying to find it it says there mark where, with Lanceria recently being earmarked to be a smart city, do you have any exciting projects around that area? So I've looked at Lanceria for many, many years, um, been offered various um, plots and, and urban and development opportunities. And for right now, I'm not doing anything in that area. I'm still looking at um, places like Limbro Park, uh, which are in big infill areas, because that's to me, Lanceria is a bit of fits like outside the urban edge, if you really want to call it that, even though it's around the airport. Um, I think it has it has legs in 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 the future, but for me right now, uh, it's got a way, it's got time, time before it really develops. You've got a beautiful residential area like Blair Athol out there. Um so but it's not dense enough from a population point of view and from a land infill down down the road, you, you've got Cosmo City. Cosmo City's got the industrial park right next door, uh, which was developed by Investec. Um, fantastic place, great opportunities. Um, and then you hit this no man's land with, with nothing around. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time before that gets going. That's my opinion. Absolutely, yeah. 
Um, and Mark, residential versus commercial, what is your opinion? What, and is there a right or wrong? Is, is one better than the other? Is one easier than the other? I mean, what's your, if someone asks you that question, Mark, um, I want to get into the sector. Should I start with residential? Should I jump into commercial? What's your feeling? What's your view on that? Well, Andrew, that's a big question. Eh? That really is a big question. Mm. You know, I think, you know, I've been doing this for, for such a long time in terms of, of, you know, the things that I've done in terms of time, like I've done industrial developments, I've done residential, I've done conversions of buildings, I've done, you know, all these kind of things, um, lots of shopping centers, uh, redevelopment of shopping centers, extensions, you know, it's, it's goes to yeah. where your passion lies. It goes to yeah. where your passion lies. And it takes time, you know, trying to do everything on the same day, you, you're never going to get it done. So I, the way that I did it, and or rightly or wrongly, I don't know, you know, I can't give you the ultimate recipe because people have done different things. But just the way that I handled it is I started off in the retail sector. I started off literally knocking on doors. Um, and I told you the story about it. You know, I joined uh, when, I, when I joined, when I got into the industry, I started off as a broker and I went literally walking shop by shop to go and find tenants, to go find a business to, to sell, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I built my knowledge base up. And I think that's the most important thing is get your knowledge base, understand how to do things the right way, um, knowing the legislation, knowing um, the systems and making sure that your projects are bankable, then you can, you can choose. You can choose if you want to go into the residential thing because you like yeah. dealing with people and end users directly, or you want, you want to get into the industrial side, which is like, big box development for one tenant kind of thing or shopping center, which is, I think in my honest, honest opinion is the most stressful type of development that you could ever do in shopping center space. Um, but it is, it's horses for courses. And, you know, you've got to find, you've got to find your niche really is really what I think. Yeah, exactly. And, and, there, and there's no right or wrong. And I guess if you want to get into the space, like you say, Mark, it's, it's like anything. If you want to jump into the Airbnb strategy, go find out more about how that works. If you want to be an expert at student accommodation, go study what it means to become an expert in, sh in student accommodation. If you want to build cottages, build your back rooms, if you want to get into building shopping centers, it's not as easy as people think it is. And like anything, find somebody that's done it and that's done it well, that's got the, that's got the life experience and let them guide and teach you. And that's the whole purpose of this weekend that's coming up on Saturday and Sunday is for you, Mark, to share not just is there a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow, but also this is where people are making mistakes. Uh, they're not, yeah. They aren't engaging the right um, town planner. I, I, I don't know if you want to share that story with everyone that where the town planner said to you, no, don't worry, Mark, we'll get you town planning. I don't know if you want to, if you don't want to share, don't worry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell the guys a story. Um, and it's actually quite interesting because Samantha, uh, puts a, has got a comment on there where she's, she's talking about um, uh, for residential properties, how do you go about dealing with neighbors that refuse to give you consent for silly reasons? Okay, so this is going to incorporate that, Samantha. So in, enjoy this one. Um, so back in, in 2006, when the property market was flying and everybody was becoming a bazillionaire overnight by investing in property, because if you bought a house today, Tomorrow, your house was worth 25% more, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we, had, we, we haven't had a boom or hadn't had a boom like that ever in our property history. Um, and I decided that uh, what we should do is we should get involved in this where I cut my teeth in residential development. So we went and we bought a property. Uh, we went to go look at a property first in Randburg and we're sitting on this property and I went, wow, I wonder what I can do with this. So I get hold of my time planner at the time. He's no longer my time planner, I just have to add. Um, and I said to him, so, um, what can I do on this building? You know, on this, on this piece of ground, I'm buying 6,000 square meters, uh, in the heart of Randburg and it's costing me 3.8 million Rand. Uh, please, uh, tell me what rights I can, if I want to build, build on here, what rights can I get? So straight off the bat, he says to me, you're going to get 10 story rights. You're going to do four stories of retail, two stories of offices and one story of residential. You build a basement it's it'll work i'll get you the rights don't worry about it and i went okay cool and based on this piece of advice uh 
I'm going to spend 3.8 million of my very hard earned cash Needless to say, I now have the piece of property in my uh, possession and I ask him to go and submit uh, this town planning scheme that we want to now undertake. We want to rezone, so please go ahead and, and, and go with it. <laughs> he comes back two days later with a letter from the town council, which kindly says to me, uh, this is not in our town planning scheme. You are not going to be building this. If you try and build anything like this, we will stop you immediately. So now I've got a piece of ground that I can't do what I wanted to do because I listened and I didn't go and check for myself. So it was like absolutely, absolutely nuts. So I sat on this piece of property. And, um, I was very lucky that Saskia, my, my current town planner, came along. And and uh, this is where your question gets answered, Samantha. So, so what happens is there is a new regional spatial development framework, RSDF, that's now being approved for the area for Randburg. And they moved the node that actually moved it I think it was one street down. So all of a sudden, the back of my property now is incorporated in the node. And the node says that you can build certain heights to certain densities. All you've got to do is you've got to apply. So you apply. So we put in our application. Our application went in. We had over 300 objections. 300 Jeez. objections to this. Needless to say, one would think at that particular point that all is lost. All is not lost. People will object for any reason that they want to object. You, we had objections from people because you're allowed in, in terms of the act. You, if you're in the next suburb, you can object. There's no reason you can object to whatever you want to. Anyway, we got 300 objections and we had an advocate. We had Saskia. We had the whole team. We had the whole professional team and everything else. Proper submissions done. And we won um we it went uh it went through the whole process we won and the project is now coming out of the ground so it is it's a time thing you've got to be ready for the time if you tick all the boxes and you make sure you're not going to do anything that is against policy as long as you're not against policy and you work with the council and it makes sense and you take in consideration your neighbors etc etc you will get your rights there will always be somebody giving you uphill yeah. about what you want to do. There's always somebody trying to stop you. It's never going to change. It's part of being a developer. Exactly. It's always going to be there, right? Um, thank you for that, right. Mark. Um, I see there's a question from um, is it Hitton and then from Yako, which I'll ask you to read there, Mark. And let's just see if anyone's joined us. Quite a few people have come. I'm just getting Facebook back up. This is the Coffee Chat with Andrew, Dave, and our special guest today is Mark Berman. Um, he will be joining us for the premier event this Wednesday evening in the East Rand of Joburg. Um, our partners will be there, our sponsors. And remember, our premier events offer our intermediate and professional members. And it's all around networking, actually doing deals in the room, meeting like minor property investors. And for those of you that want to learn more about, you know, there's quite a few people in our community who, who, who want to do multi lets and they want to build cottages, they want to build rooms, they want to extend the property. Some of them now are wanting to do high rise buildings. If you're in that space, if that's where you want to go in your property journey, join us Wednesday night. Um, and then, Mark, just before you answer that question, high level, um, this Saturday and Sunday, because quite a few people have just joined us, this Saturday and Sunday, what will we be doing in Joburg? What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking everybody through the development process from right at the beginning, defining what property development is, all the way through to actually handing over the keys to either the owner or the person who's going to be renting it, the whole process it's going to be a rocket ride. You're going to be learning things about professional teams. You're going to be learning things about town planners with special guest speakers. You're going to be learning about specifications. You're going to be learning about the building contract, the building program, all that kind of stuff. So it is going to be, let me put it this way. If after the weekend you aren't exhausted, then I've done something wrong. You'll be enlightened and exhausted <laughs> because there's yeah, a lot exactly. to cover. It really is. <laughs> exactly. I hell of a lot to cover, but it's exciting, right? And, you know, if you do get it right, Mark, there's a lot of money to be made, but also there's some there's some common common mistakes that people are making. 
Um, so it's out there, ladies and gents. Please, if you're interested, if you want to join myself and Mark and the team in Joburg this weekend, I know Jade's actually flying in from PE. We've got some 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 of our community uh, members joining us and flying in from Cape Town, Durban, Bloom. So it's going to be a great event this weekend. Don't miss out. Um, contact Alani at the Property Academy. I'll ask my team if they can just pop a link in there, but speak to Alani about this weekend. So, Mark, there's a question there for you. Okay, there's two. So the one is, what is this is from uh, Hayton, which is, what is your opinion on housing developments that basically copy and paste architectural plans without giving any consideration to the site or engaging an architect like Baldwin Housing Developments? Well, Baldwin actually, they've got a, an incredible system. You know, Baldwin m and um, there are a couple of these guys that, that really, really have got their act together. They, you know, you've got a massive housing shortage. Um, you've got two and a half million people that require housing uh, in this country. So there's got to be the fast track kind of cookie cup cutter kind of scenario that occurs. Now, Baldwin are very good at what they do. m and very good at what they do. Every site is studied, surveyed. They plan their buildings. Um, they plan the positioning of their buildings, their clubhouses. Every single one of their developments is just... You know, it's, it's really worked around the end user. So just because um, I might not want to live there doesn't mean that I can criticize the way that they've done their design because it's designed for people who are in that market. And that's one thing I need to tell you about being a developer. It's super, super important. Is you need to do your research. You need to find wow. out what is needed in an area and you deliver that product. It might not be where you would live but it's definitely going to be what other people will buy. So that's that's really the the, the thing that I can give you um, in terms of advice on that kind of stuff. And, and I have a lot of respect for the likes of Baldwin and, and m and Developments and, and a couple of other guys out there. Um, Seif Properties uh, just uh, launched a 200 and, uh, sorry, 126 unit development, 125 on Hilton in Limbro Park. Also, the same kind of thing. They've looked at the marketplace. They've got units that, that range from uh, 500,000 Rand to 1.2 million. And that's the niche. And it is very much designed for people in that income bracket. So, yeah, that's so hopefully that answers that question. Yeah. And then let's go to uh, Yako's question. Okay. What Yaku, is the typical timeline? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so what is the yeah. typical timeline from identifying a greenfield site to breaking ground, would a 14-month lead be sufficient for a development, say a block of 40 flats, where an old building will be demolished? Okay, Yaku, I'd love to be able to answer this succinctly for you and quickly, and but I don't have enough data. So firstly, what is the block that is currently standing there? Is the property zoned for the right for, for what you want to do? Because by way of example, when uh, this go back to my Randburg situation, I start. I bought the, pro the 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 property in 2006. I eventually got it finally zoned in 20, 2020, uh, 2019. Just to give you an example, so um, the actual process once the RSDF had moved was two and a half years. So, you know, one, one has to look at the, the real life example. I'm not going to be able to just say to you, oh, don't worry, 14 months. But once you've got your zoning and uh, your bulk services and all that kind of stuff is in place, and that I'll take you through all that kind of stuff on, on, on the weekend um, in terms of development and, and what you have to do in order to make this all happen. You know, it's all about how many square meters you're going to be able to build in a day. And that's up to the contractor. Um, you know, you can build uh, a four-story building with 40 units you can build in six months you know you know that can happen you know it all depends on the contractor that you're using depends on the amount of people that are that are on site and and the structure so it's horses for courses different projects different design yeah. are you doing upmarket apartments are you doing entry-level apartments what are the finishes it's there's so many questions so i can't just say oh don't worry 14 minutes 14 months is fine you know, it, it could be longer. It could be two years and 14 months because you you got like me, you got the zoning wrong. 
No, exactly. So it's kind of how long is a piece of string? But I guess when you do get all, um, all the information, Mark, it should be easier for you right, to identify if it's going to be an 18 yeah. month journey, a two year journey, or could we get it done in 14 months? Yes, exactly. Absolutely. Um, a few people have just met, uh, sent me a personal message on Facebook um, asking for information. Mark, you, can you see my screen or not? Uh, I'm just, I, I'm just yeah, sharing your screen's screen, yeah. been shared now. Yeah. There's me. Okay, great. If people just go to the Property Academy Workshop, so the Property Academy Workshop, the Property Academy .co .za, <laughs> click on webinars and workshops and go right down to the bottom, the last option there. You'll see the information, you click on it, um, and you'll see all the different learning modules that Mark will be taking you through um, day one and day two, all the information's on there. <clears throat> if you want to see what Mark's going to be covering, <clears throat> It's got, all, it's got all the information on there for you. And then contact Alani or go directly through the website. And then, yes, um, John has inquired. Again, go to sapropertynetwork.com. Click on events. Go to physical premier networking event because obviously we're talking about a mark, but people are asking where do they go to get the information. Um, so go to sapropertynetwork.com and then click on events. Go to physical premier networking event. And this page will come up with all the information that you need. Okay, so all the information is loaded on the website. So let me stop sharing for a second. Um, there's been quite a lot of questions, which is great. So this week, ladies and gents, other than Tuesday night, which is Sappen Global Invest. So that's tomorrow night for the people that want to invest globally. There's a great opportunity in Australia right now where our members are starting to invest. And if you want to learn how that works, um, I'll ask Dave just, just to put a link in the in the chat box over there or the comments box if you want to start investing in australia for as little for as little as five thousand us you can and tomorrow night um, there's a mini workshop showing you how you can do that all the information will be on that link and then the big topic for this week um is mark berman wednesday evening and then saturday and all the information is there um so just to update everyone that's just joined us so please tag a friend in ladies and gents if you have anyone that's interested in the subject um i think there was one question from a cash i don't know if you want to um, answer that now yeah cool so the question is what is the most risky development that you've been involved in and have you had experiences with any service providers that did not meet the expectation how did you manage and resolve this okay so uh the most risky development that i've ever been involved with was we are still trying to put together a development, believe it or not, um, in a place just north of Pretoria, where the community uh, has literally stopped us. They have put in a situation where um, we, we, the, the owner of the site um, redeveloped a service station in the area, and um, we, were, we were very far down the line with planning. We had boxes, superstores coming in, um, a couple of drive-throughs, hairdressers, et cetera, et cetera, nice little community development. And we thought we had the community sorted out until they built this service station, the, this petrol station, and the community, certain, not the whole community, let me not generalize, because it's always a couple of guys making a noise that stop things like this. And, and we, to date, the owner of the site is too scared to go ahead because the um they threatened his life uh once he'd built the the petrol station they broke in they tied up his staff a uh, couple of guys and they just terrorized the guys a little bit so you know you've got to when you talk about risk there's that kind of risk um where you are dealing with communities and public and things like that where no angels fear to tread so that's the one side they've got and you've got project risk where you've got other kinds of project risk where for instance, we were doing a shopping center just outside Nelspruit, where we had um, ecological issues that we had to handle. There was there was a river that was running past the back of the site, and with doing that, you know, the the, the cost to actually um, ensure that the river uh, was protected and there was no further erosion caused by stormwater and all that kind of stuff that took place was was a high risk and and had to be mitigated because the, if we wouldn't have done that, then the, the community as well as uh, the council wouldn't have allowed the shopping center to go ahead. So you've got various types of risk that you have to mitigate 
in, in all that kind of stuff. And then your last part of that, which is handling service providers that don't perform. Welcome to the building industry. Yeah, you know, I would like to say that everybody out there you can trust and and you can just work with them. And the fact is you you need to make sure that you have proper contracts in place. You need to make sure that you've read everything, that the proper specifications are dealt out and signed for, et cetera. The industry standards, the industry norms, you've got to be able to work with this. And there are clauses which if the person's not performing in, the, in, in, in certain contracts, you can replace them, you can kick them out, you can actually claim damages from them. But it's like, don't use Bucky Builders. I keep telling people, if you are a developer, if you, if you want to build any, even if you want to build a cottage, you need to sign contracts. And, and that's the way how you resolve things. If you've got contracts, you can resolve things. If you've got no contract, there's no resolution because you're just going to get taken. And that's, I hope, answers your question. Uh, and I think even on that, Mark, if, even if it is a Bucky Builder and you do get a contract signed with a little one-man band that has no assets, and, ha and you know, you've got no real leverage, even with, even with the document sign, it's going to be very difficult. And that's why we always say, don't choose any builder, any tradesman, get some proper references, go view the jobs they've done, do as much due diligence as you can possibly do. And so there'll be no guarantee that you're going to get the perfect yeah. builder. And, and, and Mark, one thing I realized and learned is um, when builders or tradesmen are actively looking for work, that's an alarm bell for me. Because your good builders are always, always busy. And it doesn't matter if the market's doing this or doing that. Good builders and good tradesmen are always busy. So when there's a tradesman desperate for work, that's, uh, you know, alarm bells start to ring for me. What do you think? I think you're 100% on the button. And I think that goes for everything. Um, not only builders, but um, anybody in the industry from top to bottom. Um, you know... One of the things and the reason that I want, I want to do this and I want to teach guys, uh, take them through this journey together with you um, on property development is because it doesn't matter what the market's doing. If you are skilled in your profession, you can play the piano even when it's raining. And that's the point of this whole thing yeah. is that your game, know it well, learn it well, keep learning and you will always find and make opportunity for yourself. But you need to know. You you, you can't, you know, let's, let's um, uh, Novak Djokovic, he is the top tennis player on the planet at the moment. He is the top tennis player. He has a coach. He has a coach. He just yeah. not, I don't have a talent. I just, you know, it's like, uh, I'm out here, I'm, I'm busy, I'm busy playing tennis. Oh, I'm, I'm Novak Djokovic. No, I've got a, coach he teaches me he watches me he makes sure that i'm hitting the ball correctly etc 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 that's what it's all about you know i think i've said this to you before andrew what you've done here with the uh, southern property investors network and, and the academy is so very very special 30 years ago there was nothing like this around there was nobody to to mentor you and take you on this journey from beginning to end um it's such an important function because what you're doing is you, you're allowing people to um, do this job, which has taken me 30 years to learn and still learning. Um, you're allowing them to do it in a much shorter space of time. So somebody can be professional and proficient by learning from people who have done it before under their wing, not trying to steal information in a project meeting or from somebody who once saw a brick and now they think they're a builder. You know what I mean? So. You know, it's, I think yeah, exactly. the whole system that is yeah is spectacular. Absolutely. We've seen massive success, Mark. I mean, you've seen some of the, the students, you know, um, Emma and Tom from Durban, just by leveraging the right team and working in a trusted environment um, and leveraging other people's money, uh, leveraging other people's expertise, leveraging other people's time um, and working with the professionals. Because in the property sector, you said it before, there's all different all different sectors within the property sector where you can make money um, and people just need to go for where they're passionate where they want to make money in property you know what uh, what makes their tail wag and and, and where and where do they want to be but i think mark that's brought us to the end of our conversation so i asked dave to come back and um, mark what is one last comment you'd like to leave our audience for for today wow 
one last comment. I think I want to take up what JP said in, in his little comment that he made right in the beginning, which is, he says, if you build it, they will come, um, which is a standard joke that I have in, in, in this industry. Um, if you, it's not about if you build it, they will come. That never happens. This is all about planning. It's about execution. It's about knowing your job, knowing your market. And very importantly, as a developer, you're a facilitator. You're facilitating things to make sure that they happen. This is a game where as long as you are trained, you can play in it. And you can make yeah. a lot of money. And I wish you all the best success. Make lots of bucks. You're part of an amazing network. And if you need anything from me, feel free to contact me directly. I'm always available. Awesome. Thank you so much, eh, Mark. So that's the Monday Coffee Chat with, uh, with Dave and Andrew. And it's Monday, and we've got two more nights until the premier event. Um, let me know in the comments box who's going to be joining us on Wednesday night. Um, let me know who will be joining us this Wednesday evening with Mark Berman. We'll have Absa Bank there. Tough will be there. Uber Home Loans will be there. Intergen will be there. Um, all our partner sponsors, and it's a great platform to start networking, swapping business cards, doing deals, raising money, finding your next property deal. It's happening this Wednesday evening um, in, uh, in the East Rand of Johannesburg. La Sola says yes. Locanio is going to be there. Nicolene is going to be there. Um, Yako would love to be there, but he's in Belgium. I'll try to put you on my phone, um, Yako. Um, and then Saturday, who's let me know, is anyone interested in the two-day masterclass on, on the weekend? Just say, yes, I'm interested or no, I'm not. And I'll ask you to contact Alani, and Alani or Alani will contact you. Um, let us know in that chat box, in the comments box. Um, Dave, from your side, what's happening on your side, man? Um, not much. I'll be heading up to Joburg uh, later this week to join you guys. We've got some Investor of the Year Award preparations that we're working on. And then, yeah, um, be the meeting until that Friday. And then, yeah, I'll be with you guys on Saturday, Sunday uh, with uh, Mark. And we'll awesome. be talking developments. And, yeah, it'll be good fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. So the McGlashan will be in Joburg. The McGlashan loves coming to Joburg from Cape Town. It's his favorite. <laughs> Okay, cool. Shyam says you'll be there. Cool. Quite a few people will be joining us. Um, so, Mark, thank you very much. Dave, thank you very much. Um, and it's going to be a great week all about developers and development. See you all soon.